Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now we have had so much response in the way that we've put our chicken coop together, combination vegetable garden. So it's time to show everyone how we've done it. Now just before we go in there and I'll take you for a tour, you'll see that we've got one main corridor and on the right hand side we've got three bays. Now each one of those bays are six meters by four meters. Now, like everything here at Fat Cow Farm, we do things as more of an experimental to see how things work. So at the moment, we've only been testing the last six months, half the side. We're happy with the results and more than happy, we are stoked with the results. Our uh, vegetable quantities and volume was through the roof. We're now preparing to go out to the other side. And what I'll do is in, in um, months to come, I'll show you how we put it all together. And the end result being is that you'll end up having three bays on one side, three bays on the other with a central corridor. Now, before we actually get in there, what we found was that this right-hand side is perfect for summer crops mainly because of the, the higher position of the sun. We did notice that our winter crop was a little bit low from what we expected, and that would have been also um, contributing factor that maybe not quite enough sun. So what we're sort of gonna end up doing is then the winter crop will be on the right, and our summer crops will be on the, the left. And we'll go through those motions. Now you might be able to see here at the moment the central corridor is roofed. Now we've got a gutter here at the, the end and that fills off the water tank. We've got a sprinkler system in um, being put in here. So that feeds the chickens for the water, but it also feeds um, and waters all the vegetable gardens throughout the year. So, and I'll give you a bit of a rundown for that. And let's go and have a tour. I'll see you soon. All right, so here we are inside Australia's best designed chicken coop, if I don't say so myself. Behind me is the, the roosting boxes. Look. Hey, what are you doing? Loving it. They love it. So in the, in the roosting boxes, we have four um, bays for them to lay their eggs and do all the good stuff. It's elevated um, so that we can actually maximise the service area that we have underneath. Now there's a few um, little things that I need to point out. And when we have a look inside, I'll show you what we've done as a part of the flooring. So as they roost at night, a lot of the manure comes down below. Now we use that manure then once a week, that gets transferred and we, we put that back into our composting to generate soils and everything else. You'll see here, we we're talking about the, the water tanks before. You'll see on previous videos that we've looked at the um, C-Flow um, diaphragm pump. We've used the same pump here. So this gives us water throughout the whole chicken coop and also waters the veggie gardens. Now you can see I've got a, a little header tank here and in it I put a, a toilet system um, float valve in there. So as that comes down, the chickens do their thing, they drink and do everything else that it automatically fills up. Works an absolute treat. Let's go and have a look inside and see what we can find. All right, so here we are inside the chicken coop. We've got the, the roosting um, box here. Now, as we said before, we've elevated it, mainly so that the manures can um, go straight through into the straw below. And then from that straw, we can turn that straight back into our compost. But come in and have a look, and I'll show you what we've done inside. So inside, Oh, hello little one. Inside the roosting boxes, in the, um, what we've got here is straw at the moment because it is still quite cool in these parts of, um, of Tadon. But what we find is that over summer, we take this straw out and we've got this mesh down here. So this mesh then gives them good ventilation for those summer months because it does get quite warm up here as well. But at the moment, we keep them nice and snug 
and we get some um, get some straw in there. Now we obviously take this out once a week. We turn this into our compost, and um, and we go from there. Now we've got some um, natural timbered um, roosting perches here. We did try some just standard ones, but they never used them. And as soon as we came back to the natural timbers, um, straight up, it was amazing. Now I've got my four little nesting boxes here. Now what we can do, we've got access from the outside and I'll show you that later on. And um, where's she going? She's going to, oh, look what I've just found. Hang on a tick. Oh, look at this. Two fresh eggs and they're still warm. I love it. My omelets have never been better. We'll take you for another tour down the veggie garden side and we'll go from there. I'll see you soon. All right, now, we're just looking at our veggie garden. Now, we've um, pretty much finished our winter crop now. You can see through this one here that this is just the leftovers from last, last winter. A couple of cabbages. Um, what else have we got in there? Looks like we've got a couple of leeks left over. A few other bits and pieces. But we let that now go wild. All right, so we'll let that grow a little bit further up. And then as we start planting out our summer vegetables, We'll let the chickens, we'll open up this door, we'll let the chickens go in, they'll scratch around and eat what's what's left and basically turn it into this. Now, this is from last summer still and this looked like that not so long ago. Now, we're still making compost and a few other bits and pieces in this area. Um, it's getting to the point now where we're just about ready to start making our beds and start planting out our summer vegetables. I'll take you up to the top one, our, our, num our number one bay, and I'll show you a, a few little examples of how we've got our watering system all set up and ready to rock and roll. I'll see you in the next one. All right, so here we are in our veggie garden number one. So we're gonna be preparing this one for summer. Now, we throw everything in here for our girls. You can see that we've got some grass clippings. We've got um, some compost that's got now aerating. So this has all been stacked up for a week. And we just let the chickens go through it for another week. And then what we'll end up doing is putting that back into a compost. And I'll do a separate um, little video about composting. But I just want to show you though, what happens with the soils around here. So I'll just dig in if I can just Look at this. Oh, we've got worms, baby. So this is the sort of soil that we'll be planting our veggies in. Now, what we found is that when we first moved here, it was all just pasture land. There was a little bit of moisture content and everything else, but it was very, very compacted. Since we've designed this sort of chicken coop, what we're finding is that the chickens are just doing exactly what they're meant to be doing. They scratch and poo, we add compost, we add everything to it, and everything's fantastic. So what we'll find is that we'll now set this up for um, our summer vegetables, this pen here and the one down further down. And then what we'll find again, it's only getting better and better with our volume and quantity of vegetables that we're producing. Now what I'll do is I'll show you now the how I've plumbed it all in and we can go from there. I'll talk soon. All right, so where we're standing now is the leftovers from our winter crop. So the chickens have previously been in here. Um, they were in here over the summer while we were producing either side of us. Now, what I can show you is, I'll quickly show you the watering system and how we've sort of set this out. Now, like I said before, this is a six meter by four meter bay. Um, now, what we typically do is run one garden bed around the perimeter and then one up the middle. We have a small little path on both sides of the center bed so that we've got access um, either side. Now, I've been, we've been working around with this for a while now and I find that if we have our garden beds around about that 700, 800 wide, that makes it very easy to stand and reach in and pick up all the veggies that you need. So that, that's, they're the sort of numbers that we're working on. And it still gives us a large volume of area. 
The garden paths themselves are, you know, around about four, 450, something of the sort. Now, just before we, we go through, as weeds and everything else come up through our garden beds, I just chuck them into the paths. And as you're walking up and down, up and down, and doing the things that you do, you're breaking them up, you're crunching them into the ground, and everything's all just sweet. All right, so that's just a little bit of way that we do it here at Fat Cow Farm. Very, very easy. Not much work at all. All right, now, if you look down here, I have a ball valve. Now, this ball valve is just connected to a drip hose. All right. Now, if we stand back and have a bit of a look, you'll, you'll see through all my junk the hose itself running all the way around. Now, what typically I would do at this point is I, would, I have one system that goes all the way around, loops back, and then comes back. So it feeds everything. Once I've got my beds already established and, and everything else, and before I've even planted, I put my sprinkler system in. Now, that way that I can then plant out close to the drips and we're maximizing water efficiency. Now, we capture our water here off the roof from the main corridor, comes down into the gutter system, along the pipe and into the rainwater tanks. So these rainwater tanks here hold close to about 7,000 litres. There was a couple of times over summer where we actually did run out. So you'll see on, on previous videos, I'm going to be setting up a water pump house at the top dam and having an extra manifold set up for that to come all the way here and to fill up our rainwater tanks so I don't have to be carting water anymore. How good is that? I'll take you into the main corridor now and show you how we prepare our veggies once we've picked them and we'll go from there. I'll see you soon. All right, so here we are. Now, what we did find was once we came in to collect all our vegetables, we were sort of standing here going, oh, no, what are we going to do? Rah, rah. So we've quickly whipped up a little bench. Now, we can come here. Jen turns up with her little basket of veggies and everything else. Now, carrots, whatever it may be. A lot of those things still have tops and, and whatnot. So like, like all vegetables, we can pretty much process all the vegetables here on the bench top. Everything goes back to the chickens. We turn to here, we turn on the taps, we wash everything down, into the basket, back to the homestead. How easy is that? Gotta say it's good. Now there's one other, one other thing that um, I want to show you because we are a rural block here and we have seen a couple of foxes. Probably about six months ago, I was down at the, the local rural um, shop and I did find this product, which was a fox deterrent. Now I want to show you what this is because I was a bit skeptical at start. I thought, oh, here we go. But we haven't had a problem with foxes and it's got to be working. I'll take you down there now. All right, so this is the product that I found down at the Rural Supplies. It's the Fox Lights Night Predator Deterrent. Now, I was a bit, oh yeah, just another product, rah, rah, rah. But I tell you what, <laughs> this thing actually works. And I haven't seen any dig marks around the chicken coop. I haven't seen anything. Now, what, what this actually is, is more like a disco. There's lights that beam out in all directions, very randomly, like a strobe. There's red, there's blue, there's clear or white. Um, so it's almost like, you know, every time the fox comes near, uh, he has like an epileptic fit or something of the sort. However it works, it doesn't matter. They don't get into the chicken coop. So what we've done is we've just set up a star picket and we've got it so it's just under all these um, cross, um, cross braces here. And my, th my, my sort of thought process is, is that because we're on a fairly good slope here, that as the foxes come up, this thing hits them in the eyes, <laughs> they run away. So if it's meant to stay high or low, it, I, I really don't know. But that's our theory behind it, <laughs> and it's working. What happens here, though, is that it turns on only at night. So during the day, no problems at all. There must be some sort of little sensor in there. So as soon as it goes dark, bang, it's like disco time. 
and away we go. I have seen Jen up here a few times dancing, but well, we'll just leave it at that though. I'll see you soon. Go. All right, so here we are at the chicken feeder. Now, a lot of people have asked us, how do we actually feed our chickens? Now, what we've found is that as the, the chicken coops evolve, we're not having to feed them as much in pellets um, than we were at the start. Now, at the start, we were filling up this little feeder for about every four days. Now, as we're going through now, what we're finding is that we're only filling up the feeder probably about every 10 days. So they're finding, the chickens are finding a lot more food within the coop, digging up worms and things like that. Now what we've done is we've just got some PVC, we've drilled some holes in, um, so you can see the pellets coming through now. Now all we do is we fill this up and then gravity takes care of the rest and just brings down the, the, um, the pellets to soup. Now Mads is here, just to show you how easy it is to fill up. Look at that, easy as. The chickens love it, I love it, Mads loves it. It's a win-win for everyone. So, as we keep on evolving through the, um, the chicken coop, we'll show you how we put next door together um, for our winter bays. And, uh, and we'll go from there and we'll see you soon.